we are on the letter A, the very first letter of the alphabet 10 piece, and you've got to guess where we are. So pretty certain you'll guess if you know what is on the uh, what is on the letter A. And I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pan up. I'm actually sat in the car. Lady Em and Ellie and I have already been to this uh, magnificent sculpture and already done all our filming, but unfortunately it's absolutely windy as so the audio is not very good. And also I filmed pretty much all of it on slow-mo. So after about five seconds, I just started going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I've pretty much completely knacked all the filming. So the only option is to be sat here in the car and baking because it's a wonderful day. It's absolutely red hot and uh, it's coming through the windscreen and I am boiling. I am a baking bear, shall we say. So has anyone guessed it? There's the letter, it's the letter A. And they're just going to pan over and you're going to see exactly what we came to see. Hello, Lady Money Penny. <laughs> I'm not sure that's Scottish. <laughs> so, as you might have guessed by the intro, our A to Z adventures for the letter B for James Bond take us into London and James Bond office. So, you may well have seen it on James Bond films. Certainly the exterior, things have blown up and James Bond's been on the uh, on speedboats down the Thames there. So MI6 is based here. MI6 is the uh, British Secret Service, but it's the international side of things. MI6 looks after our affairs, or the Britain's, Britain's affairs, internationally. It's MI5 that look after domestic affairs. So keep us safe in this country. Got that, yep. Yeah. So if you're a spy, an international spy, that is where you report to. You see a security camera there. It's quite an unusual building. Very unique. It is very in keeping with the area of Vauxhall. Yeah, the buildings around are very similar. I don't. I think if you didn't know, you wouldn't necessarily realise that it was a government building and certainly the Secret Service. So, in true James Bond style, we're going to be travelling down the Thames looking for baddies, and we believe they're in Greenwich, which just so happens to be the next letter on our list in our tour of the UK on our A to Z adventures. So that's quite handy. So just a few facts and figures that the building was built in a uh, completed in April 1994 and it was opened by the Queen in July 1994 along with Prince Philip so it's home to the secret intelligence service the architect was Terry Farrell and partners and there are rumors to be a secret tunnel leading from here 
to Whitehall. Police boat. On the way to find villains, probably. So the letter C in our A to Z adventure has brought us to London and Lord's Cricket Ground. We found the Wellington Place Gate. And we got here because we've had a walk around from Abbey Road for the letter Z. So everything seems to be on this wall. We're going to see if we can find the front door. So this looks like the, the ticket booth or one of them where you can Get up and buy your tickets. Not open at the moment. Okay, we're getting somewhere. I'm just poking my head through the bars. Some turnstiles here. We can see the ashes there on the picture and the gadget running. And that looks there as though that's a grandstand and a little bit of green. Does this count as a, as a find? As is, have we found it? Have we arrived? We found a little map on the wall here on the outside. So we are here at the north gate. Not sure we came on this tube station, St. John's Wood. So not sure whether we're on this side or that side or not. Wellington Place. We were on Wellington Place. I think we've walked it, we've walked along here and we've just poked our head through these turnstiles here and we've seen a little bit of this corner. Cool. So it's obviously quite big. We'll have a go around, see if I see anything else, and I'm sure Lady M will have some facts for you. So we're here at the bicentenary gates, which were presented in May 1987 by the Duke of Westminster in memory of his uncle, Charles Littleton, 10th Viscount Corbham president of the MM MCC in 1955 so MCC stands for Middlesex County Cricket Club I believe and they are the resident cricket club at Lords uh, the cr yeah cricket club at Lords so there's the the plaque on the gates kind of just about see some grass through there, I'll zoom in, oh, there we go. So we are hoping to pick up a double decker bus from here for the letter D. We're hoping to find the heritage route which runs from Trafalgar Square past St Paul's and then over to Tower Hill where the Tower of London is, so the original mint. But while we're here at Trafalgar Square we'll just show some of the sights. There's the National Gallery there in the background and obviously we've got Nelson on his column. Do have a bit of a fun fact about the lions that Trev from Coins to Collect told me. 
He told me that the guy who invented the or did the lions, the sculpture, sculptor, had never actually seen a lion before. He got a lion's head delivered back in the day. Didn't know what the body looked like because he'd never seen one. So he uh, used his dog, and that's why it looks, uh, looks like a dog with his paws out, out the front there, and then the lion's head. So apparently lions don't sit like that. So if that's wrong, please do email coins to collect and complain. So we've got some London double decker buses and we're hoping to catch the heritage route to find the original the original buses that uh, they were decommissioned a few years ago but to transport for London does still run a heritage route so we're going to try and find that it's around here somewhere and we're going to travel it travel amongst it for the D for double decker bus After many hours of trying to find the heritage route, Route 15, we did find it, but then to find the original buses only really run on a weekend in the summer or on bank holidays, so unfortunately we weren't able to to, uh, to ride it, because we want to go here from Trafalgar Square, past St Paul's, and then over to Tower Hill and sample the traditional London bus, but unfortunately we can't. But never mind, there's another London bus there. They're now new, modern double deckers that Transport for London commissioned a few years ago. So the new modern buses are accessible for everybody. Get wheelchair access that the old buses didn't. So the old fleet was retired. So we didn't get to sample it, but we did certainly saw loads and loads of double decker buses here whilst we've been in London. So it's not the heritage bus, but that's the one that you want, the number 15 to Blackwall. Takes you from Trafalgar Square, past St Paul's to Tower Hill, but it's on the older style London bus. So on a weekends or on a bank holiday, a weekend in the summer, bank holidays, then uh, that's the bus you want to be looking for. On the bus stop you get if you're in Trafalgar Square. There you go, number 15 in the middle there, bus stop F, just near Charing Cross station. So unfortunately Lady M and I didn't get a chance, oh there's one coming the other way look, across the street there. Unfortunately Lady M and I didn't get a chance to ride the traditional one, but hey ho, it's as close as we're going to get to the D today. So the letter E of our A to Z tour of the UK has taken us to West London, so we're in a cafe just outside of Kew Gardens. I'm here with uh, Total Coins, Coins to Collect and Lady M and what we have in, oh yeah there's, uh, that's Total Coins you can probably tell there's, there's Coins to Collect and just about Lady M's fingers. So we're, gonna, we're all having a full English breakfast and we're starting off with tea. So things are a little bit uh, unusual here, I don't always see it where you've got a tea bag left in the, in the cup, I think that's so you can decide how strong that you were, uh, how strong you want it. And also, I can never quite suss these type of things out in cafes because how do you know how many teaspoons you're putting in? I'm guessing I should have put it on. I should have put it on the spoon. I just ended up tipping it in, so it's going to be a little bit of a, um, I don't know, a bit of a mystery, mystery taste really, because I do like a little bit of sugar in my tea. So let's see how let's see how we get on with this. So this is Trev's breakfast and. Everything that's quintessentially English about the English breakfast is it's unique as well. Everybody likes something a little bit different. So, what's yours, what's yours Trev? Well, I'll, I'll try the mushrooms. I'm not keen on mushrooms, but I'll have some. Definitely the uh, tomatoes. But I do like the beans on the toast. Yeah, it's quite particular. Yeah. And, and then, something I must do, brown sauce in with the beans. Wow. He's just ruined a perfectly good breakfast. No, that <laughs> makes beans so much better. There's two things missing. One is red sauce, or ketchup as some people call it, and black pudding. And this is what you call a proper English breakfast for me. So you've got sausage, bacon, egg, beans. Mushrooms I'm not so keen on, but it's all about the black pudding. If you don't know what black pudding is, I'm not going to describe it, because it's pretty... Um, it's grim. Black pudding is pretty unique, but that's what it's all about, with a splodge of red sauce. So I'm going to stick some of that on as well, and you can't have enough red sauce with your 
<laughs> with your breakfast, we've got toast. So, what does Stuart like? Oh, he's another heathen. Yeah. Look at all that. <laughs> Ruined some perfectly good, perfectly good beans there on his, uh, on his breakfast. The lady M's pretty similar to, to mine. Is it a North yeah. East thing, a North East of England thing? Just maybe? no tomatoes. Don't do tomatoes. Right, red sauce. Oh yeah, it'll be red sauce. Good lass, that's what it's all about. Okay, how interesting. English breakfast. How, how close are we to, to the letter E? So that's got bacon, egg, sausage. tomato, sausage, beans. Mm. So we aren't quite traditional. Trev, Trev's probably the closest, are you? Yeah. Awesome. So I'm working my way through this nicely. It cost me seven pounds, which I think is pretty reasonable with your two slices of toast and your tea as well. And uh, I like to save the best bit for last, which is the black pudding. And yeah, and I suppose it's just a, it's a plate of food, I guess, but it is different. So there's things like, my preference would be, I'd like the tomato sauce to be a bit thicker, a bit runny. I always have to cut the fat off the bacon, but everything else is just pretty standard. Lady M's done well. Lady M's just straight in. She's uh, demolished a lot. So any 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 tips, Lady M, for your breakfast? What makes a good English breakfast? Well, you need to start talking so much so you can eat your food. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> start filming. Yeah. Okay. That's the advice. Sure, a bungle and eat, eat your breakfast. And that's it. We're all done. The uh, I took the the bacon off onto a side plate of where where I had my toast. That's been taken away. So now we've got a nice clean plate. Lovely. So. English breakfast, what more can you say? Mmm! <laughs> <laughs> the letter F brought us to Cornwall, Lady M and I, and we were trying to find some traditional fish and chips so we could show you. Um, we were in a little bit of hassle because we went to Rick Stein's place, we were going to mm. go to his takeaway place, and where is it? Not Penzance, where is it? Padstow. Padstow in uh, Cornwall. However, there was a massive queue, so we ended up going to Chip Ahoy. Yes. And, and this Insert is it. Insert picture here, because I took a picture of the front. Oh, did you? Wow, yeah. so you're probably looking at Chip Ahoy now. It was quite traumatic to get there. One-way streets, very busy with tourists and things. <laughs> very narrow. And, I, and I've got to say, I'm not that impressed, lady. I'm going to show the box, put the box down. Oh. That, that looks the best part to me. I think they're going to be superb. Chips look a little bit kind of bland. There's no scraps. Oh, hopefully there's plenty of salt vinegar on mine. It just looks a little bit... Fish looks lovely. A little bit beige. We'll have to wait, we'll have to see. And hopefully you'll get to see some other um some, some other versions of fish and chips as we as we go along in different places. Who knows? And this might be the best we've got. But I suppose if nothing else, Lady M, can you really beat fish and chips in a Tesco car park? <laughs> <laughs> of course, there was no way we were getting parked there wasn't. anywhere, where we were. There wasn't. So we stopped, we pulled over, we ran in, we got the we got the Tesco car park stop. Not exactly the most glamorous. Let's see oh. what. Uh, let's see where we go. Yeah, lovely. Lady, I'm saying the rare. Lady, I'm saying the nice. Chips are nice. Yeah. Oh, yep. just a bit of finger as well, there, Lady, I'm from me. I'm afraid I got a bit of not exactly professional. And thanks, Ellie, for ruining my audio Sorry. by coming in from the coming in from a wee at the at the deluxe toilet stop at uh, Tesco. So my favourite fish and chips: loads of salt and vinegar, gas, loads of salt and vinegar, loads of scraps. Does anybody know what scraps are? I'm not quite sure. Put in the comments below if you know what scraps are. That's what it's all about. Uh, what else do we like on here? Bread and butter, or, or make it to make a chip butty. What do you what do you call your bread and butter? That's another thing, isn't it? Your your, your bun that you put your you put your chips in. What do you call that? We would call it a chip butty. Mm. Who knows what other people will uh, will call it? Mm. Right. Okay then. So if we do stop anywhere else, you might see a bit after this. If not, this is the best we can do for fish and chips. And it's lovely. Take it back, Lady M. Every last mouthful has gone. Absolutely delicious. And that's uh, that's what we were after there. Look, the letter F for fish on there, fish and chips. I think it was cost nearly nine quid, man. So it was quite expensive. I think where we used to obviously cost at home. Maybe it's a fiver, no, fiver for the fish and a pound for the chips. Is it? No. Maybe seven quid. Oh, is it? Seven fifty in home. Maybe. Okay, seven fifty at home. So it was nearly nine pound a year, but it was really nice. Sir Poochington clearly enjoyed it, he's he down the there. Fish. Yes, he did, and he thinks there's some more. But Lady M, uh, we managed to get all ours. What, what would I do? What, how would I change it? How could I improve it? It was a little bit less expensive, maybe. And if the fork, rather than being plastic, could have been uh, wood. You know, them traditional yes. little wooden forks yeah. are quite, uh, that's what you need to do if you're at the, 
at the seaside. I don't like the feel of them though. I don't know what oh, it is. It's better, than, better than plastic. I know, I don't agree with plastic, but I'd rather use my fingers if that was the case. Fair enough. Oh, well, so, Putin, are you done? Yeah. Okay. So, this is. Did you like them, Harry? Yeah. Did, did you enjoy it? Yeah. Uh, just, I think he's just going to lick the box out, isn't he? <laughs> you will give him half the chance. There we go. So, so Fuji Chen enjoyed it. Ow. <laughs> That's my finger. <laughs> so full, full, full bellies from the professional backdrop of our car in Tesco Car Park. I think, I think this will do for F one. This is us done. I, I what what more could you want? Fish and chips, salt and vinegar, load, yep. loads of nice fish, yep. nice chips. What Didn't even need tomato sauce. Yeah. So well done to Chip Chip Ahoy. And yeah. I'm sure it was a lot cheaper than Rick Stein. We'd have paid a fortune. Oh, won't we go yeah. to Rick Stein's in Padstow? Right, one last look at Sapucci, and please do, uh, please do join us for our next day to Z adventure. So the letter G has taken us to Greenwich, so we're on our way to the Greenwich Observatory, and uh, I thought you don't see that every day. A traditional phone box that's going to be turned into a snack bar. <laughs> so that was pretty cool. So we've just got off the ferry. Not that ferry, that's a cutty sack. So yeah, we didn't get off that one. We got off the ferry. From there's there's the Thames over there. You can just see the, the shard in the background. There, look, there's the shard of glass. We've just come up this way from the ferry boat. So that looks like an observatory, but it's not the one we're after. We need a big red ball on the top that helps you set the time so let's see let's see where it leads us so the letter G for Greenwich Mean Time has brought us to Greenwich Park in the background there is the National Maritime Museum what we're here for is through the park and over them trees you see in the distance there that is the top of the conservatory. No, it's not. That is the top of the observatory. <laughs> and you can see a red ball on the top there. That's what the mariners used and people used to set their timepieces according to Greenwich Mean Time. At one o'clock today, that ball will rise and drop. And the minute it drops, that's precisely 1 p.m. Well, that's if it's working today. Not quite sure because the museum is closed and the observatory is closed. So, do people still need to set the time? I guess we'll uh, I guess we'll find out. Got to say it is a reasonable climb. This is how high up we are in the minute. See the Millennium Dome there. Or the O2 Arena as it's known now. But we're here for this. We're nearly there. There it is. We're here today at the Royal Observatory, which is the home of the Meridian Line. Now, unfortunately, it's closed at the moment. Um, but things that you can do if you did want to come and visit in the future, so you can take a selfie on the iconic Meridian Line with one foot in the west and one foot in the east. You can discover John Harrison's groundbreaking timepiece, stand in King Charles II's magnificent Wren design. Octagon Room in Flamstead House and take in one of London's best views from Meridian Court and it recommends that you spend about an hour and a half here you might just be able to kind of see up one of the trees I'm not sure you're going to be able to see very well but that looks like that's the top of the observatory there in this building and then pretty good views across London ah. so it's hard to see behind the trees but there's the observatory down there you just maybe kind of see there is the red ball just peeking behind the trees so the time ball that drops I can't get any closer because there's workmen and uh, the radio's playing so you can't actually hear what we're saying so there's a 24 hour clock there that I'll, I'll insert some footage if I haven't already of the, the clock itself 
and also down there is the, uh, the the British measurement so you've got three inches six inches a 42 feet the British yard so very much this place is all about measurements and precision also it's got a lovely view as a statue here it was a gift from the Canadian people and the view is just uh, is just amazing Five. Get ready. Should be doing it now. <laughs> okay, so we waited. We can hear church bells chiming in the distance. It's officially 1 pm, but unfortunately, the ball did not drop. It 5 2, it should have got halfway, and then 2 minutes 2 started rising all the way to the top before dropping at exactly 1pm but unfortunately it's not working so this is what you call an absolute bobby bonus the observatory was shut the the, the place where the ball is was shut shame but we haven't had to pay any money so that's good news mm -hmm. an absolute bonus Lady M has stumbled across the line itself so Lady M is on the west uh, is it latitude yeah, or longitude? Do you west longitude I think longitude I'm on the east and we found this amazing free free line. Can we can you see it? There it is, look. The meridian. The meridian line. Absolute Bobby bonus. And it didn't cost us anything. The letter H for Houses of Parliament has brought us into London and there's the coin with the pork colours on it there. And just behind us is the ticket office if you want to do a tour of the Houses of Parliament. There's the prices. If you're interested in having a tour around the Palace of Westminster, there's the ticket office. Unfortunately it is closed today. And what we'll be doing is we'll be we kind of go down here and around there you'll see it's under refurbishment at the minute and we're going to try and get as close as we can and show you as much as we can from the outside hopefully around here you will get to see elizabeth tower which is up there you can maybe just see the clock face so Big Ben, the bell, is behind there. See, when we get a bit closer, we'll tell you everything we know about the Houses of Parliament. So that's not a bad view. Obviously, it's covered in all the scaffolding as it gets refurbished. It's also a guest appearance by Darth Vader down there. I don't know whether you can see him patrolling the streets. Making sure that everything is in order by the looks of it. So there's another shot of the Houses of Parliament. Like I say, it's July 2020, so it's under renovation for some time, some time yet. In Parliament Square. I think it's called Parliament Square anyway. I've got the Churchill statue here. Churchill was the first commoner to appear on a coin. It was uh, commemorated on a on a crown. And Lady M and I are going to sit down there and have some dinner. There she is. Okay, so we're here around the back of the Houses of Parliament. Um, at the moment, there's quite a lot of scaffolding up. So this is the best view that we've got. So I've just got some facts for you. So it was originally built in 1016, which was over a thousand years ago. Um, unfortunately, in 1834, 
It was demolished by fire and it was rebuilt between the years of 1840 to 1876. The architects were Charles Barry and Augustus Pugim. So the owner of the building is whichever monarch is on the throne at the time. So it's currently Queen Elizabeth. So the Houses of Parliament is a World Heritage Site. And for those of you that don't know, it's where all the elected MPs sit and have their seat in Parliament when they're elected. Okay, that's me out. The letter I in our A to Z adventures brings us to the very end of England, the most southerly point, and this is the first and last gift shop and refreshment house in England. Another clue to where we are, there's a lighthouse that's one and a half miles away from where I'm stood. And as we pan round, you will see the very, very end of England. So you might see, if you look at your sign just in the distance there, and it tells us that we are at Land's End. So we've come an awful long way to try the ice cream of Cornwall. Let's hope that it's uh, let's hope it's worth the journey. I'm used to normally just cheap and cheerful Mr. Whippy with a flake in, but let's see what posh stuff they've got down in Cornwall. Well, you can tell this is going to be posh. Kelly's of Cornwall. Look at all them posh flavors. And definitely 100% posh when you know it's going to get scooped into its own corner by a man rather than just coming out with a plunger. That there, £2.50, this cost me 40 pence extra for that, uh, that bit of fudge that was sticking out. So this is me trying to put a brave face on the fact it cost me £2.50 for each ice cream. <laughs> Absolute fortune. But, uh, but at least uh, Sir Poochington enjoys it because you're just about to see Mr Poochington take a little, little lick. That cost about 30 pence, I think. Hope you enjoyed that, Harry. Hope it was worth it. <laughs> so that was Land's End. Let's see what other ice cream Cornwall has to offer. So this was earlier on in the day. We went into Newquay and we saw, the again, the luxury Cornish ice cream and some unbelievable flavours. One that took uh, caught my eye was Honky Porky. No, Hokey Porky. Hokey Porky ice cream. Not sure what that is, but anyway, I'm just... Uh, a lad from up north, I don't know what's going on. And a little bit further down the street was Ben and Jerry's. I know a lot about Ben and Jerry's. I've eaten many, many tubs of this. Not uh, Didn't pay for the fortune it cost in their life for a little bit of, just a tiny little bit in a tub. But it just shows you, I suppose, when you're in Great Britain, the different uh, the different ice creams that you can get. And, of course, I'm a lover, just like uh, what seems to be the rest of the UK. He's, uh, he's Lady M when we were at Kew Gardens earlier on in the year. Trevor's just about to pinch a little bit of a Mr Whippy there. Might just see him sneaking in. But that's the best, he can, best ice cream you can get if you ask me. Mr Whippy in a flake. So the letter J brings us to London. And we found this Jubilee Greenway pathway kind of thing. And we're hoping that it's going to lead us to a... Is it a sundial, Lady yeah, M? Jubilee sundial. The Jubilee sundial. So let's see what we can find. Let's see what it's, uh, why we're here. There it is. The letter J for Jubilee. Right, so we found the Queen Elizabeth II Golden Jubilee sundial. So we're going to see if we can get it to work. We've had a little bit of a practice and we're not quite sure, are we, Lady M? No. So it's probably uh, like early learning style, how to tell the time with Bungle and Lady M. So from what we can see from the instructions, there's, there's two footprints there. So Lady M's going to stand on the footprints. And then in front of her it says, what does it say, Lady M? Stand on the line nearest to, to nearest today's date. So it's set to Greenwich Mean Time. So the date is. It's 
said. July the 20 something, isn't it? It's 21st, so Tw that's July 22nd. Go on then, right, so if Lady M goes to July the 22nd, then we're assuming that their shadow then tells you the time. So it says it's about half past one, two o'clock, but it's quarter to three. <laughs> so we're not quite sure how that we're not quite sure how that works out. Maybe I'm not tall enough. <laughs> no, it doesn't seem to make it. We can't quite suss that out. But we know it's set to Greenwich anyway. So right next to the sundial, the Jubilee sundial, in the shadows of the Houses of Parliament behind me, there is a statue of George V. So you may know this guy from uh, previous coins, like the half penny, the penny, etc. It's also, of course, the Queen's granddad. Awesome moustache. Yeah, so this is the gentleman. So when you're looking at the, uh, the older pre-decimal coins, if he's got a, a big moustache, then it's George V. So that's the Queen's granddad. It was her dad, George VI, that the Queen took over from in 1952. And then the, is it a silver jubilee in 2002? No, it says golden jubilee. Oh, it's the golden jubilee, was yeah. it, in 2002? Of course, yeah, golden jubilee, 2002. So 50 years after she took the throne, this sundial is there to uh, commemorate it. Of course, we've, we've had the golden jubilee, haven't we? That was 60, uh, sorry, Diamond Jubilee, that was 60 yeah. years yeah. in 2012. Yeah. So we're not far off, what's, what's 70 years? Who knows? Oh, 2012, 2022? Yes, what do you call it? Oh, goodness, God. I have no if, idea, I don't know anybody who's got that far. No, if anybody knows what's the, the 70 years on the throne, the 70th, or the, what type of Jubilee is it? Put it in the comments below. Platinum, maybe? I don't know. Could be. Could be. What, what? It's not diamond, it's not diamond, it's not gold, not silver. What gets better than that? What gets better than a girl and a diamonds? I'm not sure. Hello everybody and welcome to the latest A to Z adventure. Can you guess where we are? Sword in the Stone car park, any clues? This might give you a little bit more of a clue. So, stored in the, sword in the stone car park, and it's welcome to Tintagel. So, here is the map of the town of Tintagel, and uh, yeah, this should hopefully give you a clue to what letter we're about to do. And if you haven't guessed it by now, surely this gives it away: the King Arthur's arms. We are in Tintagel. We're going to see the castle of King Arthur. And today's episode is all about the letter K for King Arthur. We haven't picked the best of days for it, but I believe that the castle is this way. Getting to the castle is weather dependent. We have booked, we pre-booked, but unfortunately the winds are so bad that we can't get over to the castle. So the, I'm guessing the castle must be on some kind of island. There's a little bit of a close up for you. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk down the path. We're going to walk down there, which is 480 meters. And once we get there, we'll know for definite whether it's open or not. But at the minute, it's not looking good. Let's find out. Down we go. There's Lady Emma Tech Guy into Poochington. And if nothing else, the visit centre is open. Just being informed. And we're going to get a, see some nice views, even though it's uh, it's rainy. Certainly a bit of fret. Oh, so Poochington is taking a dump, that's nice. Onward to the castle. Now I've had to do this bit in voiceover because it's so, so windy. So there's the letter K for King Arthur and we're just about to pan over onto the remains of Tintangel Castle. 
So there's a bridge there, so it spans from one side to the other. And it used to be joined together, but the, the water and the, the elements have, have washed it away. You'll see as we pan back across towards the bridge and down into the uh, to where the water is, you'll see that uh, yeah, it all got it all got washed away. So in King Arthur's time, then you could walk across, but now it's a visitor's attraction and they've had to stick a bridge there. There's the bridge, and we'll soon be going over that, even though the weather is not great. So we've just come round the corner from where we were just showing the video, and this is the uh, entrance to the castle. So we, we're just about to check in. Tech guy was just checking out the uh, the board here and what all the, the details were, and we're just going to go to that hut in front of us, check in, and then we'll be in to the, the, the castle grounds. So the first bit before the bridge, you'll, uh, you'll see as we walk through, You'll see the the first part of the castle, and then the uh, we will cross we will cross over the bridge. Just past the visitor centre, we've gone up a little bit to see this this higher area. It's not uh, it's not great weather. You can see that the views aren't great, although they do get better a little bit later on. And you can see, or you would be able to see if, it, if the weather was wasn't so bad. The, uh, the the sea out there. So we're gonna go down the steps. Just gonna pinch over this wall in a minute and you'll see where we're going to go down to and then we're going over that bridge to the main part of the castle exciting times it was cold and it was a little bit breezy and it cost us nearly 40 quid including the, the guidebook but i tell you what it was a great day and it's well worth a visit even if you're not interested in king arthur it's uh it's interesting to see a, a castle that's uh that's been stood here for at least 700 years And another great view there. We've come down from that high point and I'm just looking to the left hand side of the bridge and any minute now we're gonna go across it. Off we go. Only new, not been here very long. That to replace the uh, the old bridge to get across. Quite scary. That's the view looking down, almost halfway across. So we're a fair old distance up. Amazing views. That's what it looks like down the other side there. So the bridge is made of like slate. It's like, like tile slate all pressed together. Quite, uh, quite interesting. I don't think Sir Poochington appreciated it on his paws, but he did. Uh, he did come with us all the way. There's Lady Em and Tech Guy. They're stood in the middle, and you'll see in a minute. Lady Em's going to point out the fact that there's a gap between both, both parts of the bridge. Look at that. Straight down. And I just had to put my hand in to prove that there was a, actually a gap there. <laughs> there we go. Right, let's zoom across now and get to the uh, the other side. Lady M Tech Guy and Ellie are already there, exploring this part of the castle, the ruins. And it's wonderful. And if King Arthur was real, because he's he is myth and legend, but if he was real, I'm sure he'd have been proud of this castle. Ah, oh, there's the Poochington there. He's uh, he's loving it. He loved. He got very wet, but he's loving loving the day. Right, let's go and explore a little bit more because we're going to go right the way to the top of that hill there. We're a little bit higher up now. You can see that waterfall coming down the other side. Just below us, like underneath our feet, is Merlin's cave. We couldn't get down to there. Well, that's where Merlin the wizard allegedly hung out. The visit centre is down there as well. That building there, that white building. You've got to go down some steep steps. You'll see them right at the end. And on we go, this cool archway. Just thought I'd just stick this in for a bit of added effect, really. Walking through. We were already drenched by this point. And I'll just show up for a bit where you can look at these the spectacular views. Well worth it. You've got to be you've got to be mobile mind, you're up and down. You've got to be physically able to get up and down some pretty steep walkways.
There's a sculpture right at the top there. We're just about to go and see what that's all about. And we made it to the top. And there's King Arthur himself. The sculpture stood right proud at the top. See, he's got his sword there. Excalibur. And we got a, we got a selfie with him. You'll see it right at the end of the video. If you watch right to the end, you'll see us all getting a, a selfie with him. And it was nice. It was worth the walk up just to, just to see it. I recommend getting the guidebook as well. It was six pounds. It's quite expensive, but it gives you all the, tells you all the different places uh, there is to see. You know the settlements. There used to be houses there. There's a church up there. All, all on this top of this hill. And as you can see, we're way, way up high now. This is as high as you can get. And that's just a view from King Arthur's round to the left. Well, there's the Atlantic Ocean. If you squint really hard, you can probably see New York if you look right the way across the water. What stunning scenery. We really had a great day. There's King Arthur looks so at the opposite, opposite view. And coming up is the steps. So really steep steps. So you've really got to be really able to get up and down stairs because that's the, that was the way out. Well, hopefully you've enjoyed the letter K. And uh, I'll leave you now to enjoy some of the uh, some of the photographs that we took while we were there. Please don't forget to subscribe and do watch some of our other A to Z adventures. So Lady M and I are off on another A to Z adventure. We're doing the letter L for Loch Ness. We're hoping to find, we're hoping to find Nessie if we possibly can. We've stopped here on our way. So it's still quite a way before we get to her, but we found uh, three magnificent beasts and we're hoping you're going to be able to see the, uh, to see the first one. So I'll just flip the camera around. And just in front of us there is a camel. So you can't, I'm hoping to get a better shot. There's three of them and then we, as we pulled in, we pulled in off the main road and we're in the field but it's got quite hot very quickly so they are they're kind of hidden away can you do a camel noise lady em to try and entice him round i'm not quite sure what noise camels make do they not just grunt King. colin <laughs> colin <laughs> colin the camel <laughs> there's humphrey look oh, sat down chilling chewing the cud so they're a little camera shy, so there's a bit of information about it. So we had Colin, Humphrey, and uh, Bactanus. That was the, the name of the third one. Mm, looks like anus. Mm. <laughs> so Lady M has got a sausage and egg bun, but I couldn't resist the knee for English breakfast. And it looks the part, mind. It was um, eight quid, so it's quite expensive. I had to pay an extra pound for the black pudding. But uh, I think that looks pretty, pretty nice. Very posh. So tea's going down quite well. I'm going to put some red sauce on. And there's Lady M tucking into a sausage. <laughs> sausage and egg. No, bacon. sausage and bacon bun. And also a bit of a bonus let the fire as well. Over there, we found Stonehenge. <laughs> so we'll have a little bit of a closer look at that. So we're doing really well for alphabets on our trip to go and see Nessie. So we've just set off and we've already had the letter T for tea. We've had E for English breakfast and now S for Stonehenge. Amazing. Fantastic views. Really recommend this place. Breakfast was nice. So that's where we've just had our breakfast. Is that Nessie? Walking over the over the over the bush there. So we've been here many times before and this is an absolute highlight of the trip. Getting fresh caramel shortbread. Four quid, a bit pricey, but it's well worth 
it's well worth it. Can't wait to get stuck into that. We even got an Arthur Robin as well. The should just come here and do all our Z letters together. And I've spotted a cheeky Union flag as well. And there's the Union flags, look. All the way down the stairs. There's gifts upstairs, farm shop downstairs. It really is a cool place. Check it out. If you're in the area, anywhere near Darlington, or if you're on your way back over to the northeast from the Lake District, this is the place to be at. Jemima Puddle Duck, Tom Kitten, Squirrel Nutkin, Mrs. Tittle Mouse. Honestly, this has got, uh, this shop's got everything. It's even got Dominic the Christmas Donkey for Master Temple. There's a bird's eye view of Stonehenge from the gift shop. Pretty cool. Lady M said that is one funky looking llama. That was the Damien's, they're funky looking. Oh. That one that got his eye on you. He's absolutely got his eye on you. <laughs> Getting ready to pounce. Oh. One Hello, friend. Over the fr he's over the fence and he's got you. Yeah. Wonderful views around here. See, we haven't seen Nessie yet. She's still some some distance away but yeah the scenery is lovely here fully recommend a visit for a breakfast and a view of some unusual animals So we've arrived in Scotland. There is the Loch Ness Nessie shop. I'm currently stood in the middle of a canal, the aptly named Caledonian Canal, which is cool. And I'm not sure whether that's Loch Ness down there, or if it's or if it's up there. I really can't tell. Let's uh, see what lady. What does Lady M think? Lady M saying is that way. Oh, this is the map. Okay. So map reader Lady M is saying that Loch Ness is up there. So I guess we will find out tomorrow. So this is oh, hang on, Lady M. I have got a Nessie sighting. And here's our first Nessie sighting. Right outside where we're staying, which is quite handy. Looks like Nessie's got a little there, uh, little young wee whippersnapper with her as well. Or with him is it a boy or a girl we'll have to try and establish that so it's right outside where we're staying so we're staying in the caledonian canal center one of the rooms up there there we go port augustus is what the village is called i think is it a village is that the best thing I'll tell you what we're getting all the letters b for village and also i noticed on the other side of this stunning lock there is a Highland ice cream shop. So I for ice cream as well. We're getting all the letters in on this one there on this one video. This is the beginning of day two. Just got up, got ready, and we're on a we're on a Nessie hunt. Hopefully you can just see a bit of water over there and we'll see if we can find him. Okay, so yesterday we were stood there and that was the lock. And Lady M thought that Loch Ness is that way. But we consulted the map and um, it turns out that Lady M's map reading skills are not the best and that is in fact Loch Ness. I thought it was, I, I could never be sure, but I was pretty certain I thought if that's a canal, as in that opens up pretty wide, then blum heck, how big is, is Loch Ness going to be if that's just the canal that leads into it. So we're pretty confident that uh, that is Loch Ness now. A couple of things to give it away, one is this uh, Spirit of Loch Ness boat or ferry or whatever it is which we actually saw a dock yesterday. So that came in from that way. And the second thing that gives it away 
is if you kind of go here is the sign that says Loch Ness that way so yeah Lady M did not get her map reading badge from the from the guides that's for sure <laughs> right and off we go let's see what uh, let's see what we find so just a very short walk from where we stayed literally just a couple of minutes we found the bottom of Loch Ness and there's a pan up I'm sure you'll agree what a stunning view Oh, Lady Emma's in. Lady Emma's officially in the water. Lady Emma, we've had a Nessie sighting. Unconfirmed at this stage, but Nessie's here. I've seen her in the water. I'll zoom in, but see if you can find her. Nessie? Nessie? There she is. Hang on a minute. Just one of them pesky ten pences. There's a castle on here, lady. I'm on this uh, coin I've never noticed before. A uh, ca castle, possibly. Hopefully we'll see it on our boat trip. And Lady M sits on the tip, right at the end of Loch Ness, and ponders how lucky she is to have me in her life. She's one lucky, lucky lady. She has it all. Beautiful views and a fantastic bear. So we're going to explore some different parts of the lock, have a drive round, and just on the, as we're coming back to the edge of the Caledonian Canal, so that's where we stayed, just down there, that that bridge here, or that, that, that lock there, looks like it looks like a bridge across, we stayed just there, so it's literally just a couple of minute walk to where we stayed, so we're just on our way back, and we spotted this, and it's a, it's a pepper pot lighthouse, so it's the smallest lighthouse in the world, and uh, that would guide people from Loch Ness down to uh, down to the edge of this canal. So absolutely amazing. Who would have, who would have thought? Who would, who even that would even be there or even notice it. So I'm going to head over there because Lady M's reading that board there. There's a notice board on the wall with some info, so she'll be able to give you some facts. So I know the Lungles just showed you uh, one of the, one of the smallest lighthouses in the UK. I think he said it was the world, but it's actually the UK. And there's another example of one down there. So to give you an idea of the scale of Loch Ness, so it's 227 metres at its deepest point. Um, it's about 23 miles long, which is equivalent to apparently 4,000 Loch Ness monsters. So it says Loch Ness, Loch Ness monster, if it exists, may be around 9 metres long. The scale drawings show how difficult it would be to find it in the depths of Loch Ness. So, kind of to give, give you an idea. So, if you put St Paul's Cathedral into Loch Ness, it wouldn't even come halfway up from the bottom. So, it just shows you how deep it is in certain places. And then it reckons it holds around 7,447 cu million cubic metres of water. I know I keep banging on about it, but that's where we're staying. But honestly, it's just unbelievable, the scenery. So we've got a river here with some kind of part of a bridge or a bit of a bit of a castle or something in the water. And then just on the other, and on the other side, that leads into Loch Ness there. Look, there's a cool bridge. Definitely going to check that bridge, bridge out later, I think. I'm not sure how this has worked, but then we walked across this this lock last night. Them gates were shut, so they're now open. And I'm not sure what's going to happen. This boat, these boats weren't here, so I'm guessing that they're going one way or the other. Let's find out. And there it goes. It's opening, swinging open.
Lab on the other side now with Lady M. The bridge is closing. So I don't think it's going to be long. Six boats in, Lady M saying. So we're out of the six then. So we've got Captain Bird's Eye, Captain Pugwash, uh, Popeye the Sailor Man. Who else, who else have we got? Captain Sea Dog. Captain Sea Dog, Captain Jack Sparrow. We need one more. Should we leave that to Captain Poochie there, look? Yeah. He's definitely Team Poochie there. I think this is going to be pretty magnificent when this uh, when this lock opens. So just ask the man, and the man said there's two sluice gates underneath that big gate. So they're open, and it's coming from underneath the big gate. So we wait patiently for the water le water levels to rise, and the gates will open. A lever has been pressed. You can hear it whirring. Is that the maybe the bottom gates shutting? No, it's the big gates opening. Here we go. So as you can see, the water level's the same on both sides. So these are going to be able just to sail right through. And we are shut. And the whole process starts all over again for the next lock. Okay, so we are here in the beautiful village of Drumna Drocket, uh, which is on the, um, the coast of Loch Ness. So you can see in front of me a floral display of Urquhart Castle. And we're heading round to go on a boat trip and hopefully you'll be able to see the real thing from the boat. I'm hoping you can hear me because there's a, a young gentleman over there playing the bagpipes. So the term Loch Ness Monster actually came about in the 1930s where the manageress of one of the local hotels um, spotted something in the water and that was the term that the press used, the Loch Ness Monster. So that's where we've, uh, we've picked that up from. So I think this is the perfect way to end the letter L as the you can hear the bagpipes hopefully in the background seeing this wonderful waterfall this little stream that runs right into the lake there Getting two for the price of one here, double decker buses and a load of union flags. So they're all the way down Regent Street. A big thank you to key workers, that's for sure. And as many flags as you can shake a stick at. On our way to the Macintosh shop, 
just seen this cool, cool clock. It's got George and the Dragon there, so any sovereign lovers will recognise uh, recognise Saint George slaying the dragon. Really cool. So it's just in a just in a shopping centre. They don't have this in Middlesbrough, that's for sure. Very, very posh indeed. And hopefully we will find a very, very posh coat shop to buy our Macintoshes. So you might be able to just see the sign for Regent Street. And I'm hoping that down there is the shop we are looking for. So we found the proper posh coat shop, so if you get caught in the rain, if you're a bit cold, you, you need a poncho, you need to find your way into London, just off Regent Street, for the official Macintosh shop. And it shows all their goods there. And that is where we're at. So, not to show what they did to deserve their own coin. Now I'm only kidding. There's a sign here that says that they've decided to temporarily close the store to help with the current issues in the world at the moment. But you can still buy online. There's a gadget at the, uh, the back there on a bike. I don't think it's Olympic cycling. No, I can't quite see what he's doing. Is he taking a selfie of himself? Not sure. But see, hopefully they've got a little bit more in store in them two Macintoshes there. No prices either, but I bet they're a few quid. Yeah, Lady M said if you're going into this shop, you don't need to look at the price ta tags. Wow. You got any interesting facts, Lady M, about Macintoshes? So, the brand Macintosh is named after the Scottish chemist Charles Macintosh, who was born in 1766 and died in 1843. He invented the waterproof material that bears his name. The fabric used for Macintosh was made waterproof by cementing two thicknesses of its two thicknesses of it together with rubber dissolved in a coal tar solution. There you go. Sounds good to me. on our 10 pence tour of the UK has brought us to Cardiff um, so I know Cardiff doesn't begin with N but this is Cardiff Castle absolutely spectacular and Lady M and I are hoping to get inside there later on this afternoon but like I say the letter N which stands for NHS we're here because just across the street looking at the castle is this gentleman so this gentleman is responsible for the uh, for the creation of the NHS and uh, Lady M is going to have a, a go at pronouncing his name. So I think it's Anaren Bevan. Anaren Bevan, according. Apologies if it's not. <laughs> so according to Lady M, Anaren Bevan. So really sorry to anybody that we've offended or anyone whose name we butchered there. But uh, that's our that's our best attempt at the, uh, at his name. At, well, not uh, is it a Welsh. No, no. I reckon that's a Welsh name. Does that mean you speak Welsh? Are you officially a Welsh? A Welsh speaker now, Lady M. No, I absolutely do not claim that. <laughs> Uh, so there he is, he stands proud at the end of uh, Queen Street, overlooking the, uh, the spectacular castle. 
any rugby fans will know that uh, Cardiff hosted a, a game of the 2015 World Cup, I think was it, Lady M? So Cardiff uh, hosted a game and uh, it was the, the Millennium Stadium as it was, or the Principality Stadium as it is now, is just kind of over over there somewhere. And um, because they hosted it, because they were, they, were they, they were a host city, um, there was a massive oh, bus is in the way, but well, just where that kind of bus has uh, gone. Oh, and there's the second one, Carnage. So just about there, somewhere in the middle of that wall was a massive golf ball. Uh, no, golf ball it was a massive <laughs> rugby ball um, to celebrate that they were they were hosting a, a game of the World Cup. So thanks to Al Absolute Coins, it was Al that told us that uh, that rugby ball was there. It looked as though it had been smashed through the uh, smashed through the walls of the castle. So yeah, fantastic. Right, that's the letter N. Lady M has found souvenir coins in the gift shop of the Cardiff Castle. Can we? Will we have a touch one, Lady M, or...? Maybe not. I'm not sure. Actually, no, I think it's sealed shut. Okay. Shame. Oh, well, I won't be purchasing that one, then. <laughs> if, uh, if I can't take it out of its plastic prison. Nice coin, mind. Yes. Are they all the same? Yeah. We've got the dragon on one side and the castle on the other. Cool. few uh, items for sale in the bargain bins and oh dear Andy and Caledonian coins will not be impressed with that so Lady M has found a penny press machine so we've got our 1p and Lady M checked that it wasn't the year 2000 we wouldn't want to use a one pence that Christopher could have had so Lady M which, uh, which design are we going to pick so we can turn the wheel and See what we uh, see what we get. So you get Cardiff Castle. Cardiff Castle again. Oh, that's the yeah, one on the, the hill. Yeah, the one on the hill. I like that one. I quite like the dragon. Do you? Yeah. What's the last one? The knight on his horse. Nah, I'm not so keen on that no. one. Which one do you want, the lady? Got the, got the castle one, the castle on the hill? I think I like the castle on the hill. Okay. Spin around. Like the edge the uh, there we go. So that's right. the one we want. Okay. So go for it, lady. Right. I'm going to press it in. Oh. Now what? Do you, do you now spin it? Oh, and we should have read the instructions first. Turn it clockwise. Oh. Oh, right. I yeah, think we might. Harder. I think we might end up with the dragon here. Oh no, it's getting hard oh, to do. Okay, so it's then. doing my image. Very good. I hope anyway. Go on, Lady M. You can do it. As we wait for the mystical coin to drop. Go for it. Any minute now. Ta da! The one we wanted. Oh, there you are. Fabulous. So, to look at the other side, which way around is it? Which one's which? All right, so that's the uh, obverse. There's the, there's the queen. Little looking at you. Yeah. Elongated. There it is. A little zoom in. Cardiff Castle. I think that says Cardiff Castle at the bottom as well in Welsh. I well, can see the I'm coin. So, yeah. You can still see the imprint of the coin. Cool. I think what would look great is a, is a, a big B, maybe stamped into that. <laughs> I yeah. think that's been stamped, you know.
welcome to the A to Z Adventures with Bungle and Lady M and we have been here before well depending when I upload this it might be the other way around but we have been here before does anybody know where we are does this give anybody a clue so we're actually in Sherwood Forest and we're doing O for Oak Tree we're here to see the major oak so it's half a mile from where we are. Is it, is it half a mile? Yep. Can't quite see. Half a mile from here, and we're on the uh, we're on the trail. Just pan round, show you the visit centre. There's there's Lady M and Trev. So Trev from Coinsy Collectors is with us. We're filming two letters back to back. We've done R for Robin, Robin Hood, and this is O for Oak Tree. So we're in the wonderful surroundings of Sherwood Forest. So we're on the hunt for the oak tree, the letter O in Sherwood Forest, and we will find Robin Hood and his Merry Men's tree. But it looks like there's a selfie of it here on this bench. You might recognise this bench from previous adventures of the R, <laughs> of the previous R for Robin. There we go. But yeah, cool. Can't wait to get down there, say about half a mile this way to, uh, to the real tree. Looking forward to it. Okay, we're getting closer to that mighty oak. Be down there somewhere. Right, okay guys, we are pretty uh, we're pretty close now to finding that oak. So Trev's still with us from Coins to Collect. Obviously there's me, me and Lady M and I'm hoping that I'll be able to just flip the camera over and you'll be able to see what we can see as we as we're nearly there. So oh, hopefully in a second, let's do a click. And there it is, we are on the trail, the major oak trail. And it's just there. Just a few, oops, a few yards away as I try not to trip over <laughs> on the way down. So we'll give you a close up when we're there. And there it is. Robin Hood and his merry men's house. Where they lived, the flats. The semi-detached, is, is it detached? Detached, Trevor, is it? Yeah, detached uh, mansion. Absolutely amazing. The most famous, famous oak tree in the country, I'm sure. There was a few guys just going past. So Trev's just took these guys' photographs, stepped in, ever the gentleman. I'm sure I'll, I'll, uh, I'll see if I can splice that into the footage somewhere of Trev doing his civic duty. So absolutely. Wow, we're getting attacked by cyclists. Amazing. Trev is such a hero. He's been as a guy, a load of guys over there taken, want the photograph taken. And Trev steps in ever the gentleman and offer to take the photograph for them in front of this magnificent oak tree the most famous oak tree in the country surely when the royal mint was doing oak i'm sure this is what they had in mind it's a, a hell of a sight an amazing sight so there's the o for oak and there is the major oak sherwood forest propped up now Many, many years ago, you were able to climb it and get your photograph taken. Not anymore, it's behind this fence, and see, rightly so, it's been protected and propped up. Piece of, uh, piece of history. There you go, we can't go any further than this, uh, than this fence. But yeah, magnificent, uh, magnificent tree. And what I have done is I've took a few photographs at the visitor centre. It's closed at the moment due to the, uh, the time of filming. We've got all the issues around the coronavirus. So the visit centre's closed, but I will splice in a few videos I took for some of the facts of the uh, of this magnificent tree. Okay, so we've got some facts here about the major oak. So, as you can see from the top there, they reckon that the tree is between 800 and 1,100 years old. And it's still going strong. So, I'll just kind of hover over them so you can read them at your leisure so tw 23 tons estimated around four adult elephants that's, uh, that's pretty impressive not quite as many to uh, do a stamp your own uh, strike your own coin oh wow well. so the famous dome of st paul's cathedral in London includes six Sherwood oak trees. That's cool. Yeah. 
So I think that's quite a cool fact that the top, obviously the top of a tree is called a canopy and this one spreads 28 metres wide. Oh, and the, the roots from where I'm stood at the moment actually reach right underneath where I'm stood. And that's how far away from the tree I am. And then this one I thought was quite a fun fact. So it would take 10 people holding hands in a circle to hug around the tree. It's about a 10 metre circumference. And then that is some of the tree's wildlife you might find in it. So we can't get that close unfortunately. And then I believe there's something else around here. Have a little look. So it's known as the, the outlaw tree. Perfect place for outlaws to meet, pass messages, they'll be able to hide things inside the tree and then someone could come along later and pick that message up. That's the Sheriff of Nottingham. And there's Little John and Robin Hood. Some more facts. And there's another one round here as well, I think. Yep. And stand like the M. So if you stand two meters apart from her for a second, right, that's beautiful. Then go stand next to Lady M. Not much to see here, apparently this is the old car park that's, uh, that needs to recover. So they've moved the car park and the visitor centre somewhere else, but it's such a, the sun's just come out, we're just kind of on our way back to the car, and the sun's come out, I couldn't resist just filming that really, so yeah, there you go, 20 seconds of a bit of sunshine and, a, and an old car park, wonderful.
everybody. Today's adventure takes us to the letter P and there is the wonderful, sorry about the sun, there is the, the wonderful letter P that's on the A to Z 10 pences for 2018 and 2019. So we're on tour, we're going all around the country in order to be able to show you an example of every letter on the uh, on the 10p alphabet. 10p's, if that makes sense? Hopefully so. Anyway, so we're on, to, we're on tour and we're doing the letter P. So we're here and we're in Ingleby Barwick in Stockton on Tees in the northeast of England. And this is why we're here. It's a golden post box. So there's plenty of these post boxes. They're all around, the, all around Great Britain and Northern Ireland. So it's celebrating Team GBs in the Olympic Games and the Paralympic Games of 2012. And the gold medalists got a post box in their hometown painted gold. So this is the one that's closest to us. Sorry about the shadow everybody, we're here on a Saturday morning. So you'll get to see my lovely, lovely silhouette there and probably a little bit of Lady Emma as she comes across. Yeah. So it says this post box has been painted gold by Royal Mail to celebrate Catherine Copeland, gold medal winner, London 2012 Olympic Games rowing lightweight women's doubles skulls we should have brought the uh, i meant to bring it i meant to bring the rowing coin oh. never mind just as a little bit of an extra link to the uh to, to the and there's a bit the of extra information Ooh. catherine copeland is the daughter of the local veterinary uh surgery over here wow oh, there you go excellent fantastic trivia there on uh bungler lady m's a to z adventures so yeah this is it so have you have you got a golden post box in your area if you have Please do put something in the comments below. Let us know where they all are throughout the uh, the country. It's not the first time Lady M and I have been here. We did come in 2012 to see when it was very first painted. It was a, a real big deal at the at the time. They yeah, the really are cool. Fantastic uh, little homage to the the athletes in the Olympic and Paralympic Games. So it's and I hope and the Royal Mail have said that they are going to continue to paint them gold forevermore and I think it's just a, a fantastic tribute love it so where are the golden post boxes around the country have you got one in your local area put something in the comments below let us know where where your local post box is or even take a picture of yourself with it maybe to hold a sign up to say where it is or post it on our Facebook page or Instagram uh, one little bonus we have got for you is some of our friends have uh, got post boxes there somewhere near where they are so coming up in a minute, you will see some of our mates who've, uh, who've also been to see a golden post box. Hello, this is Absolute Coins filming on location in sunny Swansea on this lovely summer's day. And I've come down to Swansea Marina because we are heading over this direction, as you can see, to go and have a look at this gold post box for Bungle and Lady M. So this is the gold post box in Swansea and it follows the success of 17 year old Ellie Simmons and she's a Paralympian double gold medal winner from the 2012 London Paralympics. Born in England, Ellie and her mother relocated to Swansea for coaching and to train for the Olympic pool because that's where it is here in Swansea and Ellie chose Swansea for the post box as this was her home while she was training. So there we go, that is Swansea's gold post box. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you enjoy everybody else's videos. Hey up my fantastic friends and coin collectors, it's me Master Temple, I'm in the heart of Yorkshire, the heart of the promised land in Leeds and this is the gold pillar box for Nicola Adams, she won gold for flyweight in uh, 2012, she also won it in uh, 2014 for the Commonwealth Games and she won it again in uh, 2016 in Rio for the Olympics, she's the lioness, where is she? down here in Yorkshire. We are here in Edinburgh for Bungo's Round Britain Tour for the 10 pences and here we have a 10 pence with a letter P for post box and here is one of the gold post boxes and it is for Chris Hoy 2012 Olympic Games Cycle. What we're going to do is this wee P for post box. I'll just leave it here for somebody to get. Oh no, I can't leave it there. I'll leave it there. There we go, we'll leave it there for somebody to get. There we go. Cheerio. 
Hello, it's Darren here from Caledonian Coins and I've come across one of these bad boys. It's a golden post box. I'm currently in the town of Dunblane in Scotland and this post box, as you can see, has been painted gold by Romeo to celebrate one of our own, Andy Murray. London 2012 Olympic Games tennis men's singles winner. It's even got it in braille, which I didn't even know they had, which is quite good. I won't touch it due to COVID, just in case. But if we work our way around, he even has the first class sporting stamps. This will interest Christopher. <laughs> Look at that. Nice. Anyway, that's me, Darren, signing out. Thanks for watching. Hello, it's your Bihoy Jamesy here, and I'm standing at the second pillar box or post box that was awarded to Sir Chris Hoy for his second gold medal. Let's look at it. Let's look at it now, but also I am deep in enemy territory, being in Edinburgh and being a, cloud, uh, a proud Glaswegian. I may be snipered at any time. And now we see the back here. It says this post box has been painted gold by the Royal Mail to celebrate Sir Chris Hoy, as, as he's known now, gold medal winner, the London 2012 Olympic Games at Cycling Track Men's Kieran or Kynan. Not sure how to pronounce that. And here it is in its full glory. Another little known fact about this post box is it was actually created by Google. It was the first prototype for the now Gmail, but after 75 years of trying out the prototype, they decided to give up. This has been your Bihoy, this has been Edinburgh, and I am now out. On Post Office Road in the town of Harlow, Essex, right next to the post office sorting depot and flanked by a guard of honour of post office fans you will find the gold post box dedicated to Olympic cyclist and gold medalist Laura Trott. This post box has been painted gold by Royal Mail to celebrate Laura Trott gold medal winner London 2012 Olympic Games cycling track women's team pursuit Well, I'm here at Alton on a wild bungle chase for a golden post box. Hello, Christopher Collect here. I've made a trip down the road to Alton for my good friend Bungle and Lady M, and we've got a golden post box. So it is uh, for Peter Charles, Olympic gold medal winner, London 2012, Olympic Games equestrian show jumping. And it's good timely because I've got a parcel for old Bungle. So let's pop that in. There we go, P is for postbox. What is up everyone in Bungle land? Laughter here. A very busy Uxbridge High Street. And this is my local gold postbox. This one is to celebrate Natasha Baker's success in the Paralympic Equestrian. Won two golds in 2012. And but yeah, big hello from here. Hope you're all well. See you soon. So you're now going to post the package to Bungle, aren't you? Luke? You're going to put it in the post box. It's for five minutes. It won't work. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Let the Queue of our A to Z adventures. So here we are, queuing at the bus stop on our way to a special location. Where's it going to be? I guess you'll find out in a couple of seconds time. Okay, queue for queuing. Us Brits seem to know a thing or two about queuing. We form an orderly queue, and here is possibly the greatest queue of all time. A few people down there you might recognise. 
But here it is. Never been more pleased, I don't think, to be able to stand in that queue. But where does it lead? There's a little bit of a clue there. No, it's not D for double decker bus. Queuing because of social distancing. On we go. We are, we're nearly there. We're nearly there. There is the promised land. We're in, Lady M. We're in. Christopher's in. Right, which way is it to the pagoda? <laughs> we're off. Oh, he's actually running as well. He's away. I knew it. I knew he wouldn't last. Uh, rubbish. Right, literally, literally ran, ran from there. Look, there's Trevor Total Coins. <laughs> There it is. We're going through the trees. Looks awesome in the sun. So there it is, the Holy Grail, the 50p coin hunting. The one that everyone seems to be after, the Kew Gardens. 2009 and there is the pagoda yowza built for the royal family apparently to enjoy lady M will give you some facts but yeah quite uh, quite stunning a beautiful day as well really really lovely oh he's total coins just coming around the corner I'm sure he's liking it as well does he look happy yeah he looks happy enough Okay, so I know it's a bit of a cheat. It's the letter Q on our A to Z adventures and it's Q for Q in, but I uh, had to take a, a leap out of half asleep Chris's book and uh, use the Q for Q. So Q Gardens, here we are. Here is the pagoda. Absolutely stunning. It really is a, a sight to behold. So lucky to be here. Loving it. Enjoying ourselves already, aren't we, Lady M? Absolutely. Yeah, with our friends there's Trev there doing his bit, Total Coins is over there, oh we can see a Lady M, and Christopher's just kind of coming around the corner in a minute, like a, like a wild beast coming out of, the, out of the wilderness, there he is, he's about to greet Total Coins in a, a way that only two coin tubers can, I'll leave, it, uh, I'll leave that to your imaginations, look at the smile on their faces, they are pleased. They are pleased to see each other. Oh! Wow! What is it? Is that the is that the rare species of Q? It is. We we found its twin. Lady M's got the got the same one. Have you brought all yours, Stuart? You got a Q, a Q? Yeah, I've, I've decided to leave sort of ten of mine at home, and I've just brought this one. <laughs> awesome. So we are here at the Great Pagoda. Unfortunately, it is closed at the moment, so we cannot go up the 10 flights of stairs and look from the top. Apparently the views are amazing. The Great Pagoda was originally commissioned for Princess Augusta, mother of King George III in 1761. It was de designed by William Chambers. So the original dragons were removed in 1784 and have since disappeared. It was restored in 2018 as part of the historic Royal Palace's restoration. And then during the Second World War, the Great Pagoda was used as a house of secret experiments. Openings were cut into every floor of the building in order to drop and test smoke screens. And then the last fact says, traditionally, pagodas are used as shrines in Chinese culture. However, the Great Pagoda at Kew was designed as a pleasure building for the Royal Family to enjoy. So we're queuing, another queue to go into, where, where are we going, is it food? Yep. Going for something to eat, so fabulous, another queue, queuing in the queue, can we still see the pagoda, pagoda from here? Just about, awesome, right, we're going in, and some more queuing at the queue gardens. Gonna get ourselves something to eat. This has got to be one of the worst queues I've ever been in. Two pound eighty. 
Two pound eighty for a can. You are joking. Flipping heck. And I've got no idea what can or water is, but I'd expect it to sing and dance for one pound ninety. So no queue to get in here. Is it the temperate house? Was it temperate? Yeah. It's like a a rainforest. Lovely. Nice and warm as well. Little collection box. Some interesting notes down there. One there from Albania. So Christopher tells me anyway. I didn't know. Someone's put a scratch card in there as well. There's a scratch card there, look. A relatively big note. Anyone know what denomination that American note is? I don't know. But pretty short of 50 pence. There's one there hidden behind that pound. But no, no Kew Gardens in there, unfortunately. Are we at Paddington Station? Is that Brunel's Arches? Thanks to Christopher for pointing that out. But yeah, this is a pretty, pretty big place. Stunning. Could I just take the opportunity to point out some of my favourite plants? So, uh, that one. And uh, that one. So we've got a, have a second chance to see what's in another collection box. There's an old one pound coin there. Right on, the, on this. What, there you can probably see it from where you are. There's a, oh, there's a 2019 shield, probably. Nah, it's probably, yes, a, it's uh, probably a tower, isn't it? Right. Yeah, it's going to be a cathedral. That, there's that many uh, of them. Yeah. Someone's got to get, you've got to get rid of your cathedral somehow. <laughs> Three coins and a fountain. <laughs> Amazing. He's got some other fabulous coins. Lady M thinks that might be a quarter. <laughs> it is indeed. Well, well done, Lady M. A quarter. Nineteen ninety-six from the Denver Mint. Let's make a wish. So that's the treetop walkway. So if you come to Kew Gardens, you can walk up them stairs and walk all along and all around and be within the trees. It is unfortunately closed today, so we can't. It's blocked off at the bottom there. But yeah, it's pretty, pretty impressive. And we've got another queue, so we are still in the Kew Gardens, and we're in the queue for the Palm House. Oh, nice. And it's another queue, so on our way to the Lily Pad House. And after a reasonable sized queue, we are here to see the biggest lily pads in the world. So we're here at the press penny machine. I know we got one when we did the NHS uh, coin at Cardiff. We were able to get Cardiff Castle. But of course here, we're gonna to have to get the Pagoda. So Lady M, if you wanna do the business, it's one pound and a penny. And let's see what we get. Oh, oh, jumped out, yes. Need to give it some welly. And there it is. And I know Total Coins wanted one, so we're going to give this to Total Coins. Awesome. There isn't much merchandise with uh, the Pagoda on. I'm sure he will appreciate it. Smashing. Okay, so we're currently in the hive at Kew Gardens. So you may be able to hear the music and the lights flashing. So this is meant to simulate the way the bees communicate. So the more that the lights flash and the louder that the sound gets, the more noise that the bees are doing a waggle dance. <laughs> the bees are doing some kind of waggle dance. 
to communicate to one another. What a problem. <laughs> it's been thoroughly researched, Bungle. Calling Jeremy Toad Boy. Are you in there? on our next A to Z adventure. We are doing a couple of letters while we're here. And I guess the first one we're going to be concentrating on is the letter R. Can anybody guess where we might, where we might be? We'll find out soon enough. So, Sherwood Forest, where legends grow. We're looking over here at this guy. Mr. Robin Hood. And the link to the A to Z coin is a tenuous one, I've got to admit. Arthur Robin, there he is there just on his on his arrow or Olympic archery I guess we could call it so yep it does the letter R is for Robin and this is the closest thing we thought we could find that is quintessentially British that we can go on our tour so we've been a little bit of artistic license there I think well, there he is in all his glory just outside the visitor centre and uh, we'll also be going to visit his his tree the Royal Oak, but you might have to wait for the letter O or go and watch a letter O video to find out what the oak is all about. So people have told stories of Robin Hood for centuries. Legends say that he and his band of outlaws lived in Sherwood Forest. They dressed in green and lived here amongst the wild creatures and the ancient trees. They feasted on wild food and hunted with bows and arrows. Birdsong was their music, branches give them shelter. They robbed from the rich and gave to the poor. People call them merry men. Wow. So when you think about Robin Hood as we wander through Sherwood Forest, what was it like to live in the forest long ago? What was it like to be a merry outlaw? Imagine the distant sounds of hunting horn inviting you into Sherwood Forest to come and explore. Wow. It's like Jack and Ori. Amazing. So there he is. On his Olympic archery sporting that letter R. Robin Hood. Uncle and Lady M's A to Z adventures. Can't wait to get in there. Robin Hood, Robin Hood, riding through the glen. Robin Hood, Robin Hood, with his band of men. Should he retreat back to Sherwood? Cause he should. Cause he should. Cause he should. <laughs> and there it is. I guess that's Sherwood Forest. Do you reckon that's Sherwood Forest, Trev? I think that's Sherwood Forest. I reckon we're here. I can see some, I think I see some merry men down there, some people fighting away. Little John. Little John. Yeah, on the bridge, cool. Can't wait to get down there, see what it's all about. I'm already enjoying myself. Amazing. And here is a bit of info about Little John and Robin Hood, how they first met. And just behind this pole, is the guys themselves look at that so they're on the bridge having a fight I think little John whooped Robin Hood's ass and Robin Hood was so impressed that he asked him to join the Merry Men and the Band of Brothers amazing so there's Guy of Gisborne is that how you say it not sure but do feel free to uh, Pause the video in the style of Absolute Coins so you can read it at your own pace. Plenty of information here. The Sheriff and the Merry Men. Hopefully you'll be able to pause it and read it if you want to. Will Scarlet, his name rings a bell. He's Friar Tuck. I think I'm slowly turning into Friar Tuck. They get fatter and balder. <laughs> Lady M's chuckling away in the background 
And then we've got uh, little Trev, sorry, little John. So I say Trev's still with us. So I'm Fryer Tuck, Trev's little John. And then of course we've got, we've got Lady M as, uh, as Maid Marion, bit of information about that. And the main man himself, of course. It was, it was, it was, Rob, it was Robin Hood, Tre Trev said to me. <laughs> Trev said that it's Christopher, Christopher's Robin Hood. In fact, oh well if that's the case then, can we do, can we do, can we do all seven of us? Let me just do the, there is the, uh, a bit of information about the legend that is Robin Hood. So okay then, so we've got Christopher's Robin Hood, Lady Emma's Maid Marion, that's two. Little John's got to be Al, that's nearly the size of him. There's three. I'm Friar Tuck four. Mm, we'll come back to Merry Men. Sheriff of Nottingham. Who would you reckon, Trev? Total coins. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's gone, yeah. <laughs> There's total coins four. Oh, Guy of Gisborne. Does it sound Scottish? Should we have one of them? Of the, of the, of the, oh, no, I'll tell you what. The I think Caledonian coins and uh, Andy could be Merry Men because they're Merry Men together, aren't the Scots? So that leaves you with Guy of Gisborne, Trev. Alright, I don't mind being good. <laughs> yeah. Guy of Gisborne. Um, does, it, does it sound southern? I'm not, I don't think it does, does it? Guy of South End on Sea and uh, the Merry Men. So we've got Andy and uh, Andy and Darren there. So Will Scarlett and Alan Adele. Does it, does it matter? Does it look like any of them? Probably, probably not. Who would you imagine? Who's red and who's blue? Who do you think? Andy's Will Scarlett. Andy's Will Scarlett, right. Okay then. And that leaves Darren as uh, as Alan Adele. Fantastic. The Merry Men, the Band of Brothers, the Seven Coin Tubers of Sherwood Forest are all uh, are all here. <laughs> Amazing. If we're really quiet, maybe Robin's in here somewhere, building a den. Robin, I can hear a Robin. I think. Can you hear that? Probably can hear the people behind us. No, so we're just going into the this is it now I feel as though this is the beginning part I'd love to speed up a little bit because people are going to walk past us but oh, there's Lady M again in the background but he's the uh, we're nearly there we're getting there okay so we're on the hunt for Robin Hood because it's the letter R but the coin gods have been kind to us because we've actually found a real Robin in Sherwood Forest ta-da let's have a look So wonderful bench. We've got a badger on there. Is that a, a leaf? Do you know what that is, Lady M? Oh, it's, a, it's got a, a, oak a oak leaf. Fantastic. And then we've got the robin there on the bench. Absolutely amazing. A couple of horses going by. Sherwood Forest. There's the robin. We are on the letter R's A to Z adventures. While we're here as well, we've been able to find Lady M's favourite bird, which is which is nice. If you want to have a read about some of the bird song in Sherwood Forest, pause that and have a read. Oh, have we got one? Robin? Oh, he's gone, he's gone. Where'd you go, Lady M? I don't know, I didn't see. We'll find him, we'll find him. Oh, where'd you go? Come back, Robin. Robin, where is he? Lady, I'm keeping an eye on him. I can see him up there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, great. Robin, where's little John? Robin, come back, you little. No, no wonder the Sheriff of Not Nottingham couldn't catch him. People are going to think I'm nuts. Robin, I've got Maid Marion here. Come and say hello. Ow. Oh, I've just, I've just walked into a, th I've just walked into a thistle. Ow! There he is on that tree stump, Robin. Robin. He's a tricky little fella. Definitely getting stung and scraped and everything in these, in this thicket. Oh, he's gone again. He's away. Come back, Robin. And here's Robin Hood's famous tree, the Major Oak. But more about that in the letter O. So if you want to know all about this magnificent tree, do watch our A to Z Adventures letter O. So Lady Emma stumbled across this house in uh, 
in it. It's an oak tree, Lady M tells me. And not only is it Orpha Oak in Sherwood Forest where Arthur Robin Hood lives, there's some coins pressed in it. So someone or various people have clearly put, when it's been soft enough and been able to, they've put coins in. Absolutely amazing. It looks like one P's and two P's. There's a couple of 1972s in here, uncirculated. <laughs> That'd be cool. No, that one's... Oh, is that, is that a 20 pence? Whoops, hang on, where are we? There's a 2p. I think that's a 20 pence. A bit battered in there. And we've got a penny. Absolutely class, that. What a find. Well done, Lady M. Terrific. Ticks every box. As our day at Sherwood Forest draws to an end, I'm here with Trevor Coins to Collect, Lady M and I, and we bumped into the Jamesy Boy B tree. Jamesy B Hoy tree. Wow. He's definitely going up in the world now. He's got his own tree. Amazing. Hello and welcome to the letter S of the A to Z adventures and today we're here at Stonehenge which is a prehistoric monument in Wiltshire and part of a World Heritage Site. It consists of 93 stones in a circular formation and dates back to 2000 to 3000 BC. The stones are called Sarsen stones and were brought all the way from South Wales which is about 150 miles away and each stone weighs about 25 tonnes. So there's some thoughts of what the site might actually be for, but the main theory is it's a burial site, but some believe the stones have healing powers. Some people might think it's just a pile of old rocks and some people might not be prepared to pay the money to get into the visit centre. So that path that you've just passed, as we say goodbye to Lady M and Tech Guy, that path is a way of getting very close to Stonehenge without having to pay the admittance fee. So what I did is I left Lady M and Tech Guy and I walked up uh, up to this area here. And where I'm pointing there is where the security guard is. Well, what you can do, you can turn left there and you can walk around here and to the point where I'm standing. And that's just about to pan over to the right hand side. You'll see the, the road that we walked along. So we parked right at the end of that road and walked up here and uh, across that field. You will see at the end of the video how we got uh, across that field and up towards the fence. But you see that gate there? I'm just about to get there. And here I am. So this gate is the free gate. It's on a public bridleway. And you can see how close you can get to Stonehenge. So the other side of that fence is the way you will pay to get in. I'm going through this gate and along that path. And I'm going to show you where Lady M was just stood. So there it is. We were stood there. You can actually get as close as here. You can be on this path without paying the... It would have cost us £55 to get in if we paid the full whack from the visitor centre. Right, I'll tell you how we got here.
here we are with the letter T from our A to Z adventures. We are here in our cottage in Cornwall and we have got afternoon tea set up. So we have got a beautiful Cornishware teapot and a sugar bowl and the milk jug. And we have also got some cream scones. So how do you have your scone? Do you have it in the Cornish style or do you have it in the Devon style? I have mine in the Cornish style. So put it in half and then we put some jam on first. Now some people will be screaming at the screen and saying no you can't put your jam on first but this is how we do it. This is how I do it. I'll spread your jam on. Spread that round. And then the cream goes on top. But if you do it in the Devon style, you would have your cream on top. Uh, you'd, you'd have your cream on first and then you would put your jam on top but that for me is just backwards so let's put the stuff to the spoon over there pour us a lovely cup of tea so how do you have your tea? I like mine like builder's tea nice and strong a little bit of milk in and no sugar but I do know his bungle likes the sugar in his oh. get in. is that enough? enough sugar? give him a bit more sweeten him up here and it makes it well stirred. So she's enjoying the, uh, the Ian's entertainment. Bit of milk. That's one. I'm going to need more milk than that lady. I'm not, uh, oh, what's wrong with you, man? You just threatened it with a bit of milk there. Just get, some, get it in. Oh. Lots of milk. Weak. Terrible. Loads of milk, load, nice and sweet. I'll spread my cream about a bit if I can. And that is how I like mine. Afternoon tea. So here we have the U for Union flag. I'm not sure whether you can hear the water, but we are in Trafalgar Square. So there's the fountains. And there's Nelson's column, looking amazing in the distance. And as you can see, just behind Nelson's column, there are three Union flags flying high. And we also displayed rather proudly on top of the National Gallery. There's another Union flag and hopefully the wind will pick up any second now. And it'll start flapping about so you can get a good look at it. Also, surrounding Trafalgar Square, there are a few embassies from around the world. So you all might recognise that one. There's the Canadian flag. Well, we can see 
lots of uh, Union flag merchandise here. Yeah, Windermere via the ferry, yeah, it's right. Yeah, you're okay. Oh, it's a good hilltop. Hello, and welcome to the next instalment of uh, Bungle Collects on Tour. So we are here in the village. There's our V of near Sari and we are at a place which is uh, very prominent in the world of coins so you might have noticed that I've got a Peter Rabbit up there and that figure might look very familiar because there he is on the coin and we are in the place where Beatrix Potter grew up and we are heading towards the house that she spent most of her life in. And I'll have a little zoom in so you can see, which is called Hilltop. So, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit and just walk over and give you a view of the, the village. It's quite a small village, like most villages are. This one probably is one of the smaller ones I've been to but nonetheless beautiful so hopefully you might be able to hear the birds singing so we're going to head round and we're going to have a look at Hilltop so this is kind of for me what makes villages kind of quintessentially British is a beautiful garden that's what you would class as a proper village garden and this is outside a little guest house in this village isn't that absolutely stunning beautiful this is featured in so the books if you keep walking all oh, right okay yeah, I can't oh wow it. yeah is it buckle yeet so if you have a so a plaque, a, a little sign on the wall. So a little zoom in there. So, Buckle Yeet is featured in many of Beatrix Potter's books, including The Tale of Tom Kitten, Pie and the Patty Pan, and Pigling Bland. Well, there you go. And again, some more beautiful flowers in this garden. Absolutely gorgeous. So we walked round from the other side of the village, it was just 150 yards to where we parked the car and here we are at uh, the entrance to Hilltop, Beatrix Potter's house. It is closed unfortunately so we're going to have to be creative in what uh, what we do. We did bring all the uh, the Potters with us, the 2016 right the way through to 2020 and over there is the where you can get the tickets and I assume that the house is kind of up there I think kind of up there's like a little path and then goes around there I think anyway it's not quite uh, it's not quite clear whether it's a little bit away not sure whether it's behind that barn or not so we're able to get as far as where the where you can buy the tickets to go up to the house so if it was open you buy a, a ticket here and then you'd be able to get a, a time slot because they only let so many people in at once because they want to preserve it as as much as they possibly can so there's a little little area here I think where you can wait and park your bike that there is the is the guest house that Lady M was filming earlier on so it features in some of Beatrix Potter's books and unfortunately this is about as far as we can as far as we can go because it is closed but I do recommend this that you come up if it's open so you've got no idea exactly where the house is we'll try and put some pictures in 
So there's Lady M there, so just back into the car park. We'll try and put some pictures into <laughs> of the house as best we can. So it is done by the National Trust. Put the vehicles there, there's the sign explaining it's closed. We did know that before we came, but it was just trying to get as close as we as we possibly could. We did ma manage to find Jeremy Toad Boy. There he is, look. He's just kind of outside this lovely, yeah, outside this lovely house here. I think it's a hotel. We just come from back over there. It's where Hilltop is, through there. But yeah, just squirreled away here. Just mind his own business, Mr. Jeremy Fisher, AKA Toad Boy. We have also been able to find Jemima. Look, Jemima Puddle Duck's there. And just across the road, we have got Squirrel Nutkin. I think that's about as close as we're gonna to get to, to seeing anything, I guess. Just having another look at that, at that photo of mine. I assume that is the actual hilltop itself. So it's kind of difficult to get the angle. Is it square on? Is it this is it where are we? There. This bit of roof here. So that so the side of this house. Is that it up there? Is it is it so not this bit, that there? Is is that that side? It's got the same the same chimney. I think it is, you know. I think it's the side of that house. I wonder if we can just go back round and kind of, the, the road's kind of over there a little bit, whether we can just see a, see a front view of that. I don't think so, but we'll try. Can we see Tom Kitten? He's just on the bonnet of that car there. Let me just do another, can I do another point? Just there, look. A ginger Tom Kitten. Can't get any closer, any further away, but we're doing okay now. Toad Boy, Tom Kitten, Jemima Puddle Duck and Squirrel Nookin. We're doing all right. So, we're just kind of, we're working out a way of how to get close to the actual house, but it's just not happening. And I'm stood looking round and I happened to spot Jemima Puddle Duck. Right, it's still not amazingly close, but I shall walk a little closer, see if I can let you get a better view. There she is, up on the chimney. So she's sat on the chimney of the Buckle Yeet guest house. Okay, 15 coins, all in honour of Beatrix Potter. The first coin started with the anniversary coin, 150 years since, since her birth. And I think the closest we're going to get to her cottage is that that bit there so that very end of the house is it a gable end i'm not sure but i think that's the very end of the house it's kind of sideways on that's as close as we can get with the visitor center being being closed so we're back at what i think is the exit of the attraction so as you come out of the house you come back through this that shed in front of you is like a visitor center and over there it looks like a, a wildlife sanctuary something like that so you go in and you maybe see into the field something like that and i'm just not sure i just wonder whether that is indeed the house or the corner of it or the end of it could that be it i think i think it is i don't think there's anything else there i don't think it can be anything else other than that okay so we'd given up we were driving away and as we drove past we saw this gate it's saying the hilltop is that way however there's a sign here saying that uh, Hilltop Farm, no parking, access, access is required all the time. No public access down here, but in the distance, just wait for it to zoom, there it is. There is Hilltop. We've got it finally. We've been here for a few hours trying to, to, to get it, to find it, to get access to it somehow, and there it is. So. Just over 150 years ago, 154 years ago, Beatrix Potter was born. She bought that house with the proceeds of her, of her, of her books. ADM tells me she was just 16 when she bought it and she owned that house for, for many, many years. There it is. That's all, all the inspiration for her stories. All came from the wonderful Lake District all around here, through all the hills and 
trees and woodland and everything. Absolutely superb. So if you get yourself down here, do get there. Obviously come when it's open so you can you get the chance to, to walk around that house and, and have a look inside. Fantastic, we did it. Get in. So it looks like the uh, the road's run out on our <laughs> We're trying to get to the Beatrix Potter Museum. Follow the sat nav and unfortunately the road just ends. I'm guessing there's no ferries on. Unless unless we can get on. Can we get on his board, Lady M? Maybe. Yeah, board. Lord. Yeah. Maybe take us over. Oh, there's a couple of people. Maybe able to tow us over. Yeah. Never mind, you might have to find an alternate route, I think. Okay, so we have now moved on to the village of Hawks Head. We have found this lovely shop that sells Peter Rabbit and Friends memorabilia. So, so all sorts of different items. So there's an ape, oh, you've got a lovely shot of me in the window there. So there's Peter himself. And I can see Jemima Puddle Duck with her back to us there. She's also there. There is Flopsy and Mrs. Tiggy Winkle. Looks very cool. Let's look over in the window and see what they've got. There's another one of Peter near a two toad stool. And then some carrots. They're quite cool, I like them. So we've driven from uh, Hilltop past Hawkshead Village and we're now in Windermere and this is the world of the Beatrix Potter attraction. Unfortunately it is closed as well. But it's a wonderful building. We'll see what we can see. We're going to have a walk around the other side see if we can see anything. The World of Beatrice Potter opened by Victoria Wood on Thursday the 5th of September 1991. So it's been here a while. There's some characters. See Puddle Duck there. That Mrs. Tiggy Winkle next to Puddle, Puddle Duck. See the tails of Peter Rabbit book. Hopefully you can see on the door there Peter Rabbit and Jemima Puddle Duck. But if we go inside, if we just go past that. There is indeed a couple of characters. So we've got your mama puddled up there on the left. Is that Tom Kitten? Can't see his scary eyes from here. I guess that's him. Looks very lifelike, certainly compared to being on the coin. So this is the other way in. If you come from this side, if you walk down that path there, and there it is, that is the door to all the Beatrix pot of goodness you could possibly want. gift shop here wouldn't the Edinburgh woolen mill seem to be all over the place these type of shops but there's some Peter Rabbit merchandise in here as well everyone in the Lake District seems to love Peter Rabbit there he is and some ceramics there a mug 9.99 for a mug not too bad I suppose as far as mugs go or themed mugs We've got the Jemima Puddle Duck. This is uh, Mrs. Tiggy Winkle down the bottom. We've got Peter. Who's the, who's the one in the Who's the one in the shoe? I'm not sure. It was on a coin, I'd know. Oh, and there's a. He looks pretty sinister. Look at old Jemima there. Don't fall for it, Jemima. Get out of there while you can. Go, go, go. If you like your Peter Rabbit merchandise, absolutely hit the jackpot here in uh, Windermere. Where are we again, Lady M? What's this park called? Can you pronounce it? Huh? I thought you could, oh well. Somewhere near the Beedrix Potter attraction, just round the corner. We just came from kind of over there and turned right at the end of the street was the where the, attra the main attraction is. But yeah, you absolutely hit the jackpot here. Peter Rabbit and Friends, unfortunately, it's closed as it is. But there is some unbelievable merchandise. So I recognize some of these guys. That has got to be Benjamin Bunny with his red blanket. Mm, don't know who that is. Is it the Tierra Gloucester? 
if he's with his kids, not sure. Be another mouse one, there's plenty of other mice. There is uh, some fantastic. Oh, is the tip going up? Hello? I guess anyway. So there is some fantastic merchandise here. So any Peter Rabbit, Jamama Puddle Duck, Beatrice Potter fans, this is the place to come. If you're in the Lake District doing the all the sites of Beatrix Potter, this is where you want to be. For your merch. Not sure of prices. Probably is going to be pricey to be fair. This one there, there's a cupcake making kit. 11 99 12 quid. Yowza. I guess it's official merch. Not as close as you can get to official. Even got a Jemima Puddle Duck xylophone. Now, where else in the world could you get that? Other than maybe eBay or Amazon. Even Paddington's in town. Okay, that's going to do it for the letter V. So we're in Bournemouth on the edge of Lake Windermere. And I thought we'd sign off with this wonderful view. It's a glorious day. And I'm sure you'll agree, it's an amazing view of Lake Windermere. The hills in the background. Lady Em and Elia enjoying the, enjoying the sunshine, as are all the ducks. I'm sure Jemima's there somewhere. And yeah, absolutely, it's been an amazing, an amazing adventure. We've been round to Sawley. Is it Sawley, Lady M? Sorry. Sorry, I'll get that right one day. So we've been to Sawley to see Hilltop. We've been to Hawkshead to see the gallery that was closed, but we did see some other bits and pieces. And here we are now in Bowness, signing off. So hopefully you've enjoyed it. Jemima, is that, is that you? <laughs> right, we'll sign off here. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next adventure. Hello and welcome to the letter W of our A to Z adventures. Now unlike our previous adventures, we don't need to go anywhere today. We've previously been up to Scotland in Loch Ness, we've been to, to, to Wales, we've been down to London, we've been to Sherwood Forest, we've been to Angel of the North, we've been all over the UK uh, on our A to Z adventures. And the reason why we don't need to, to leave the Magic Studio today is that the letter W stands for World Wide Web. So, the World Wide Web was invented in 1989 by Sir Tim Berners-Lee, who is a British scientist, computer scientist. So he invented a way for people to share information across the world by using the World Wide Web via the internet. So, one thing I didn't know until I started researching the 10p is I assumed that the World Wide Web and the internet was exactly the same thing and it isn't, they're completely different. So the best way I, I, I try to describe this is if the internet is the way you get to information, the World Wide Web is where the information is. So if an example I would use, old, old school, so let's pretend there's no computers, there's no internet, there's no World Wide Web, and you wanted to get some information. So let's say I wanted to find out about cats. I'd need to leave my house, walk to the library, get a book on cats, and then read, I'd have all the information I needed and read up on, on cats. So if you imagine that the library is the World Wide Web, so that's where the information is actually housed, and the internet are the paths that get me to it. So I've traveled down the internet to get to the library, to get to, to access the world, the world wide web. So for example, so if I type into, into, into Google, uh, world famous cats, when I press search, the internet will take me to that web page, which is why the web pages begin with www dot for world wide web. 
So it'll take me to that web page and it'll, it'll allow me to access that information on the, on the web. So let's see where it takes us. Thanks Bungle, so my name's Chris from the YouTube channel Half Asleep Chris and this gigantic fluff ball right here is Ralph. Ralph, why don't you show us your favourite coin? Ah, the Tom Kitten 50p, I love that coin. Wait, I think he wants to spell something for us. T R E A T S treats. I suppose I'll best give you some then. Well, how about this, Ralph? Why don't you tell us what your favourite YouTube channel is? So we've got a B U N G L E Bungle. Ralph, you were supposed to say it was me. Well, I guess we'll hand back over to you then, Bungle. Okay, so we want to say a big thank you to Half Asleep Chris for sending us that video. And of course, a massive thank you to Ralph, who is an absolute superstar. <laughs> really, uh, really appreciate the effort you've put into that, uh, Ralph. Absolutely amazing. Now, some of our other friends have also sent us some, some videos of their world famous cats. So they're coming up, uh, they'll be coming up very shortly. I just want to say that if you haven't subscribed to the channel, if you're new here, please do so. Please do subscribe. Stick a like on this on this video as well. We'd really we'd really appreciate it. And do watch some of our other eighties adventures. So Lady M and I, we've been all around the UK. We've been um, looking for all the places that are on the ten Ps. Obviously inspired by Half Asleep Chris. Really appreciated watching his videos, and and we're hoping. Well, we are. We're going to do all twenty six letters, and they upload. There's some, there'll be some already uploaded mm -hmm. that you can go back and watch. And also every Wednesday between now and Christmas, the rest of the letters will be released as well. So please do subscribe to the channel, turn on that notification bell so that you'll be uh, informed every time we upload a new A to Z video. And if you like coin hunts, Lady M and I, we do weekly coin hunts. We do 10p's, 50p's, two pound coins. We search through them to try and find the valuable, the valuable and um, the rare coins in them. So if you like them, do take a, take a look. Right, big thank you to everyone who's took part. And as promised, here's some of our friends with uh, their world famous cats. Thanks very much. See you in the next episode. Hello to Bungle and friends. This is my little cat. This is Wedge. He's a little bit of a psychopath, but I love him to bits. He was the rescue cat from um, friends of friends who could no longer look after him. And he likes to sit and ignore me. Also, bonus dog. Ax Axie, do you be a cat? Can you be a cat for me? Oh, hey, walkies. Walkies? Yeah, be cat. <coughs> Cats don't bark, you're being an awful, awful cat. <coughs> Stop it. Be more cat-like. So this is Max. Max is 12 years old. Anybody? And is responsible for the majority of scratches that I have on my hands whilst I'm recording. Because he gets a little bit fighty. But uh, he's usually jet black. Throughout the summer months, though, he sunbathes and turns this ginger shade. So there we go. That's my cat. Hello, it's Darren here from Caledonian Coins, and this is our Lord and Saviour, Master Felix. He's a wee warrior. Hey, Felix. See? He's not interested in me. He just wants outside. This is Loki. Loki. His favourite things to do are bite me, uh, chew plastic, and he whinges all the time. <laughs> but he does snuggle lot with me every night so we can allow it so this is Merlin um, I've had him since I was 17 so he's 16 now and he's good friends with Hepsi, Hepsi Barber Chihuahua he had a little accident this week didn't you Merlin do you want to tell them what you did we were cleaning out his brother, Bertie, which was a red agate little bird. And Merlin here ate his brother. So Merlin's favourite hobby is getting everybody in the house to feed him. He'll go to my mum. She'll feed him. He'll then come to me and say he hasn't had any food. So I feed him. And then he gets fed by dad as well. So he gets free dinners. He then eats hepsis. And I think that's Merlin having enough. Hi, Luna. This is Luna. She is five-year-old, six-year-old on the 20th of November this year. We got her as a little icky baby kitten. 
and she is absolutely crazy. Luna, hi, say hi to everybody. So this is Jerry and he is six years old and he's a really big boy. His favorite things to do are walking all over me as soon as I lay down. Uh, he likes headbutting everybody because you're a friendly boy, aren't you? And he's the loudest purrer I've ever heard. Footprints. There are paw prints in my footsteps. Someone is following me. Looking over my shoulder, glancing back, I wonder who could it be? Softly padding behind a budding lioness, it seems. A mischievous purr of onyx fur and amber eyes that gleam. With these poor prints in my footsteps, who is following me? It's a softly spoken kitten, my next door neighbour's candy. Everyone and welcome to the letter X of our A to Z adventures. There it is. And it's also a special P.O. Box episode because we got sent this cheeky little uh, cheeky little item sent to sent to our P.O. Box and I can't wait to get uh, to get into it. Are you ready, Lady M? I am. Do I just slide it off, do you think? Yeah, you can do, or you could just maybe pull it because it's in a oh, go, on then. go on then. Oh, I just maybe gently. Oh, we've got pulling that. Superb. So, mm -hmm. what can it be? Wow. Looks very old, Lady M. Mm -hmm. Smells of coffee as well. Right. Dear Lady, <laughs> sorry, dear Bungalow Lady M, I need your help. Many years ago, when I was visiting the town of Saltburn on one of my many smugglers' runs, I was forced to leave behind some treasure whilst on the run from the Royal Navy. I have enclosed a map to help you find any hidden treasure. Good luck, and please return it to me safely. Friend of the channel, Captain Jack Sparrow. Wow, Lady M, what is it? Whoa, we've got a, a fantastic treasure map. So what's this? We've got the sea here. Yeah. We've got a stream. Mm -hmm. uh, can we see it all? And then there's some arrows to this... X marks the spot. Well, what, Lady M, what is the chances of that? Wow. Fabulous. So, cliffs here. So, yeah. we, we need to go to Saltburn by the sea. Yeah. And track down this, this treasure. Let's go. Absolutely amazing. Do you think a click will take us there? I reckon so. Let's go for it. See you in Saltburn. Okay, so here in Saltburn, we found the stream. So, if we pan around here. Oh, there's a Poochington. Checking it out. If we pan round here, the stream goes underneath this bridge and down, we could just see, down into the sea. And then if we follow it over, so kind of around that way, we should be able to see the cliffs. So the stream comes from behind us into the sea and we think, following the map round the beach, there's the cliffs. So we're looking forward to getting around there and see if we can find that uh, that treasure. Jack Sparrow must have landed here at some point in order to bury that treasure for us. We're going to be following the map and see what we can find. Okay, so this is the ship which is synonymous with the area. John Andrew moved with his family from Scotland um, who was one of the most famous smugglers in the area and he, uh, he set up the pub. So the area is renowned for smuggling because of the cliffs. There's the pier. And then if we zoom in on the houses up there. So the house, the way the houses were set up, because they're so close together and on top of one another, they used to build secret tunnels so they could transport the goods in between the houses without the authorities catching them okay let's go and find this treasure the sun is coming out let's see 
looks amazing. The sky, all the clouds, but the sun is making an appearance. And according to the map, these are the cliffs. And the treasure is over there somewhere. So let's go hunting. Right, let's consult the map, Lady M. Okay. What have we got? So we oh. found we found the stream. Oh nice one Lady Emma's put some rocks down to hold it. So brilliant. So we found the stream. We've come around okay. here. This is this is the beach line. The cliffs are so the cliffs are there. So we go through. So I reckon we must be So this the, the cliffs kinda end here, do they? So we, we must be we must be somewhere around here, Lady yep. Emma. We can't be we can't be very far away, I don't think. just near the cliffs so there's the cliffs and lo and behold look what we have found x marks the spot right let's start digging Is it Olympic canoeing? Is that Team GB? So all Sapucci cares about is Olympic tennis ball. So the letter Y takes us into London. 
and that building over there should hopefully have a few yeoman warders in it. Okay, so we have just come out of uh, Tower Hill Station. We can see Tower of London in front of us. We've also spotted a little Paddington over there. But we've also found this amazing sundial which depicts lots of London history around it. So we found some that are relevant. So over here we've got the 1066 when the Tower of London was founded. Here's the Globe, the Globe Theatre, which was founded in 1598 to 90, 1599. And we've got the three Shakespeare coins there. We've got the comedies, tragedy and histories. And then the next one is the gunpowder plot. So we've got the Guy Fawkes coin. And that is from 1605. Next one. The Great Fire of London from 1666. So it's quite quite similar to the coin that's depicted there. You can see. And the next one along is when St Paul's Cathedral was rebuilt. How is it? Sir Christopher Wren that built St Paul's Cathedral, and I wonder if that is a little Wren just as a bit of a homage to him down there. Come all the way around to 1890. We found the uh, first deep level tube was constructed. And now we've got the two underground coins, the round hole and mind the gap with the train on. And that is about it. There we go. Mint Street was originally in the Tower of London, so that's where the very first coins were minted. And when the production was too big, or when they needed to produce more coins, they moved from over there across the street. And they moved to here, so there's a, so there's a Royal Mint Court there, which gives you a clue. As we pan round, there is the old Tower Hill. So if we get up to the through the bars, and there we go, there is the, the royal crest there. Confirm this is indeed Tower Hill. So didn't have far to move. Just show you again. Busy London, plenty of beeping. But didn't have far to go. Obviously its next trip was over to Clan Tristan in Wales. But yeah, pretty cool. So we're on Tower Bridge. Here's another angle of the Tower of London. Still have not spotted a yeoman warder yet. Still no sign of a beef eater. Hopefully we will find one. Okay, so we've had to come round the other side of the Tower of London because the side over there where the, the Tower Bridge is, you can't actually get round. We were hoping to get round and come, come in from, from that angle, but we can't. So we've had to get round and still no sign of a beef eater, unfortunately. There is some cool things in these little windows. I don't, don't know that you can see them. There's like little mannequins, little, I don't know, little miniature figures in there. That's quite cool. We've got an archer there, Olympic archery, just on that, uh, on that turret. But yeah, it looks like that the only yeoman warder we're gonna be able to see so, oh, the only one we can see so far is this fella. So just in case, this is the only yeoman warder we see. There's a picture of one. Hold on to your horses. We found one. There he is. He's just about to go out of sight. Woohoo! We got one. Oh no, he's coming back. Get in there, Beefy. Beefy, you're on Bungle Collects. We've got one. The one and only. Fantastic. Sorry, can't get it much closer. Well, here's another angle of the tower. I don't know much other than Mint Street is in there. And I do know that Ron, Ronnie and Reggie Cray were the last residents of the tower. Ooh. 
beware the lions. Well, welcome to the most fav famous zebra crossing in the country. Well hello and welcome to the most famous zebra crossing in the country and we're here for this the letter Z on our A of Z adventures so we're at Abbey Road right outside the Abbey Road studios which are just a little bit over there just I don't know 10 feet so out of the shot and uh, yeah we're at the Beatles Abbey Road albums zebra crossing is there a better zebra crossing in the world? Anybody else got a famous zebra crossing? Not sure. Anyway, the letter Z, not Z, the letter Z. So welcome to the most famous recording studios that I know anyway. This is where the famous Isle of Sausage Rolls was filmed and recorded by Lad Baby. Christmas number one. And of course the Beatles hung out here as well. And there's plenty of artwork on the walls outside. And it's also got a gift shop. Nineteen sixty nine Lady M, the Abbey Road album was released. And as Lady M's pointed out, the win of the gift shop is like a zebra crossing. And over we go. Abbey Road Zebra Crossing. <laughs> 